If you're here, that means you're currently keeping ants or you're looking to become an ant keeper. And if you're looking to become an ant keeper, I just want to say, do it. The community is great and everybody's willing to help you and guide you along the way. So it's been exactly a year now since I started keeping ants. And I would say I'm just now beginning to understand how this all works. And now I'm finally understanding what works and what doesn't work. This past year I had great successes, but also many, many failures along the way. So here are my top five picks for you to be a successful ant keeper or at least a decent ant keeper. You have to stop checking on her every two seconds and leave her alone. This has to be the most common mistakes for beginners and experienced ant keepers alike. Checking on your founding colony or founding queen could be detrimental. Don't let that size fool you. Most queens are fragile and anxious little beings. Checking on them too much will result in the queen eating the brood or stop laying eggs altogether. And at worst case scenario, the workers might end up killing her. The solution to this solely depends on your patience. As I said before, I'm not the person known for my patience. <laughs> so that resulted in me losing many founding queens and colonies. So how did I get over the hurdle? I had placed them on the highest level of my closet. If I needed to check on them, that would require me to get the ladder or the step. And since I'm a very lazy person, that pretty much did the trick. <laughs> Checking on your queens once a week or once in a couple of weeks for her well-being should be okay. Quick tip 1.5. If you have a queen that stopped laying eggs and if she can hibernate, then she might be able to recover like the one you see here. After hibernation, she had laid two more eggs, so don't give up on your ants. Do your research. Ants come from diverse ecosystems and habitations. They are especially adapted to live in those environments and it is up to you as an ant keeper to provide it to them. Now most local and common species will be fine with room temperature and various humidity. However, as more exotic those species become, the requirements for those ants differ. Find out their following requirements. Species like honeypots and Texas ball ants require high levels of temperatures on their outworld as well as inside their nest, while carpenter ants and laces are fine with inconsistent temperatures, but steady temperature is recommended. Humidity varies for different species. Carpenter ants can regulate their own humidity, but most ants will require consistent levels of humidity in their nest. What type of nest does your ants require to thrive in? Some ants prefer acrylic, some do great in 3D printed ones, and others may want gypsum, and some even prefer to have naturalistic setup. It is up to you to provide it to them. Do they hibernate, and if so, for how long? And find out what are the signs of the hibernation. Please take this step seriously. If your queen does not hibernate, it might shorten her lifespan. Just like every other creature, ants love to eat. And like us, they need well-balanced and diverse diet to be at their best. Ants love sugar. Adults only live off of carbohydrates. Yes, the larvas can feed off them as well, but it won't do them good in the long run. There are many different ant nectars that you can choose from, such as sunburst, hummingbird nectar, and mix it up with fruits such as grapes, apples, and strawberries. Just make sure to use organic fruits. That way it has no pesticide and always rinse them with hot water. Mealworms and superworms are common feeder insects, but I'm sure you wouldn't like eating the same thing over and over again, right? It is the same for the ants as well. Roaches make excellent source of protein as well, and they are super hardy. Crickets make decent feeder insects, however, they don't last long in captivity, so make sure to use them as soon as possible. And flightless fruit flies are okay, but not ideal. They create too much havoc throughout the nest, so that's not really what you want. So the lesson here is, give your ants well diverse meal and your ants will greatly appreciate you and you will definitely see the difference. Please take your time when it comes to moving your ants into your new nest. Now I know what you're thinking, you got this new awesome nest for your ants and you want to move them into your nest as soon as possible. I know you're thinking of that because I was thinking of the same thing. And because I moved them into the nest a little bit too early, it actually ended up hindering the growth. And this was a mistake I made quite a few times because I'm a little bit too dumb to learn my own lesson. <laughs> From what I get it, the general rule of thumb is to move your ants into a founding nest when you can no longer feed them in a test tube. But this can also vary. When it comes to moving my ants into a nest, here are the rules I go by. For smaller species like laces or formica, wait for their second generation of workers excluding their nanetics. 
This would mean your queen has been doing amazing and now she'll feel secure to be escorted around by her workers. When the queen doesn't feel safe, she doesn't want to move, but her workers might force her, and that might result in the workers damaging her or end up killing the queen. For medium-sized ants like Campanardus, wait until the first generation of workers, roughly from 10 to 15 workers. Large species like Campanardus or bull ants will be fine with the first generation of Nanetics. Of course, these are not down to exact science, but they work for me. Growing up, I'm sure we all had that stigma of ants being annoying home invasive insects or just insects that we can step on and go on our merry way. But it's different now. Remember that ants are living creatures too and that you decided to welcome them into your home. You want a big bustling colony? Then treat them with respect and take care of them as if they were your other pets, just like dogs, cats, and reptiles. You know that old saying, you get out what you put in, and if you want more, you give more. Ants are truly special beings, they are fascinating to observe, and if you're looking to become an ant keeper, I hope my tips here have provided you some basic information. And if you're an experienced ant keeper, let me know what else works for you. What are your tips on exotic ant species like leafcutters? With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. Leave a comment below on what works for you as an ant keeper. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Bye!